you were doing so well in the first 20 days of Ramadan and just as you're about to enter into the last important 10 nights of Ramadan the minister strikes I'm going to miss out I feel like I'm going to ruin my Ramadan because I can't do barely anything I've had sisters break down crying in front of me saying that it's the last 10 nights and I'm not going to be able to fast I'm not going to be able to pray there's one hadith Allah, that should give you a lot of hope the Prophet وسلم, he said that whoever becomes ill and we said qiyas from analogy the ulama compared a woman who cannot fast to one who is temporarily ill the Prophet وسلم, said whoever becomes ill or travels and they miss out on that which they normally would have done Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records it for them in full hadith is in al Bukhari so you're still getting the reward my sisters and likewise my brothers who might become sick you're bed bound you are still going to get that reward as far as menstruating women are concerned they can do all acts of worship all acts of ibadah during menstruation except praying fasting circumambulating around the kaaba and doing itikaf the only thing that she's prohibited from definitely is from touching the mushaf not because she's impure because it requires wudu Okay, it requires the minor form of purity to be able to touch the mushaf and to touch the words of the Qur'an. The things that a woman can do in the last 10 nights if she's menstruating is that surely she can do dua, she can do supplication. As the Prophet said, Sadiq in Tirmidhi, Hadith number 2370, that supplication, dua, is one of the best forms of ibadah. And dua is an ibadah. She can seek for forgiveness by saying, Astaghfirullah, I seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, which mentioned in Tirmidhi, hadith number 3512, that Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she asked Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if she knew that this was the night of Laylatul Qadr, what should she do? So the Prophet answered that she should pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and say that you are the one who is of forgiving. You love forgiveness, so please forgive me. So asking forgiveness is one of the best things a person can do. The other thing a woman can do when she's menstruating during these days is she can do dhikr. As much as dhikr they do, it's better for them. And they can also do recitation of the Quran. Something that our sisters can do, being alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in them 10 nights when you think that you might not be able to do anything beneficial. Something that our sisters can do, feeding those who are fasting and also the poor. My sister who might not be able to go to the masjid, might not be able to go to taraweeh, encourage your brothers or your relatives, wake them up, get them to engage because anytime you help in an act of worship, my brothers and my sisters, you are getting the reward for it. The one who directs to good, it is as if he's doing it as well. And number seven, charity guys. Set up a standing order of maybe a couple of quid coming out of your bank account every day for the last 10 nights. Not only can a woman not pray and do certain acts in that time, but she's prohibited to do them and her not doing them is actually an act of ibadah. In other words, this woman, that the entirety of the time that she's sleeping and awake and not doing the ibadat that she's normally supposed to do, her not doing those ibadat is actually an act of constant, constant ibadah for her. SubhanAllah. That is above and beyond the fact that if she was in a healthy state or in a pure state, a completely pure state, she would have done them. So it's recorded for her anyway, above and beyond that, SubhanAllah.